What do you do if you have parts that are stuck? You spray some WD-40 on it. If that doesn't help, you take a hammer. In this video, I'm gonna combine the two. So my idea is to make a machine that sprays some WD-40 on a part or something that's stuck and then hits it with a hammer like this. Bam! So to do that, I need a solid frame that's gonna support everything and I'm gonna make that with these pieces of metal tubing. So let's cut these to size. To get a better weld, I'm going to bevel all the edges. These parts are all ready for welding, but before I'm going to weld them, I need to drill a couple of holes in a few of the pieces for some bearings that I need to mount. I'm doing this now because now I can still move them to the drill press and that saves me a lot of time. So the next thing, I need something where the hammer hits on. And the hammer is gonna be somewhere over here, like this, swinging up and down. So over here, I want some solid piece of metal where it can actually bang on. And I have this strip left over from another project that I think will be a perfect fit to mount over here. So let's cut this to pieces and make it fit. I'm not gonna swing this hammer myself, I have better things to do. So I need some sort of way so that the hammer can swing itself. So over here I'm gonna place a bearing, this one, and same over here. And then in between them there will be an axle where the hammer is connected to so it can swing up and down. The thing I need to do now is to make some sort of mount for the hammer where the axle can go through and I can probably even mount some springs to it to give it some more force. So let's cut this up and see how I can make a, some sort of a bracket for it. My idea is to cut two flat sides on the handle of the hammer so I can glue some pieces of wood onto it and yeah, extend the reach of it that way. So let's see if it works. <laughs> I made this flat side onto it so I can now glue it on the wood like this. I want to give it three layers in total, one on each side and one in the middle. But I'm starting with just one side so I can control it a little better. Because this side is a little bit thinner than my standard plywood size. So the next step would be to glue this side on and then the top layer, one by one. In the meantime, while it dries, I can drill the threads in here for the bearings. I'm not going to mount them yet because I want to paint this and then I need to clean it and paint it.
going to mount the hammer right over here so it can swivel on a point on these two bearings. To do that I need to make an axle that runs through a hole in here and then I can mount it. And while I'm at it I'm going to make this look a little bit nicer as well. To make the hammer go up and down automatically, I'm using Leonardo da Vinci's mechanism. He had a hammer like this with a cap mechanism that makes the hammer go up and down automatically. I'm sure he won't mind. So, off to the lathe. This is how the cam mechanism works. This thing rotates in this direction, pushing the hammer up because the diameter increases, like this. And then when it's at the end, it's free again and the can hammer can fall down. But I need to take a little bit of this, because when it's right about here, you want it to drop suddenly, otherwise it will just go slowly with the motor, because the motor is strong enough. So, right about here, I need to cut it. I temporarily hooked it up, let's do a quick test to see if it works. Wrong direction. Swap these around. Good, now we know it works, on with the next steps. First thing I need to do is I need to make a stopper over here for the motor because right now I have to hold it. Otherwise the motor is just gonna turn. And that's not really the point. So I connect the motor to the axle and the other point is over here. So just a simple stopper will do. The hammer now works, but we're not done yet. To really give this machine the best part loosening performance, I teamed up with WD-40 and I'm using this WD-40 Specialist Penetrant to put on the machine. This stuff is like regular WD-40, but with special part loosening superpowers. It gets stuck part loose even quicker than regular WD-40, so it's perfect for the job. And as a true practical engineer, we're not gonna do this by hand. We're gonna automate this. I made these brackets with a magnet in it that go on here on the tubing. The bottle goes in here. And then we're going to automate the spraying in between when the hammer hits. The bottles that WD-40 sent me were not equipped with automatic trigger, unfortunately, so I had to make my own. I'm not going to run you through the whole trial and error phase, but it took me quite a few steps to get it right. This was the first try I did, and it clips on like this. And then there was a solenoid here that had to push the button, pull down and push the button. That didn't work, it seemed like there was too little force and it was just not pushing the button. So then I made the second version, this one, where I moved this hinging point, like one and a half centimeters to the back, increasing the force over here, because the lever is shorter, but it still didn't work. I also made this hole a little bit larger to give the solenoid a little bit more room, because I had the feeling that the solenoid was binding and not pulling all the way down. Still didn't work, so then I added a little piece of metal string over here, that connects to the solenoid, so this whole part of the lever became useless. And now it works. So, taking this off, printing a new one, and I'll show you how it works.
let's see if it works. I have it all hooked up, ready to go. Some adjustment. They should sell this. Cool. So now I know it works, I'm gonna make the other one and mount it on the thing. Okay, I think this might be a nice moment to play some music while I do the electronics. So here's how it works. I have this control panel over here and this switch turns the thing on or off and it has two modes. One is just continuous, it hammers and it sprays and the other one, the hammer does one hit. Then if you want it to hit again, you press the red button. Then I have these three switches over here. Two are for the solenoids to activate the sprayers and one is to stop the hammer after one hit. Let's see if it works. This is continuous and that's the stop function. This is all really nice, but I'm not going to press these buttons by hand. I'm going to use the rotation of this axle to press these buttons. I've printed these cam shapes that I can put on here and that when the axle rotates it either releases or presses these buttons and then controls the, the sprayers. But first I'm going to clean up these wires. That's better. Now, on with the switches. <laughs> I just need to find some rusted parts and see if I can get them loose. Here I have my test pieces, let's see if I can get something loose with it. If this one doesn't work, see if I can adjust it a bit. I don't know why, but this one is the tricky one since the beginning. This one has been working steady and this one is always a bit tricky. But now it works. Take two. Probably some pliers. <laughs> this one works. This is the real test. This thing has been rusted out, rusting outside in my garden for like a couple of years. So it's quite stuck. Let's put it in there. Well, this here was going really well. We had a little casualty over here. The nut from the solenoid came loose and then the solenoid disassembled itself basically. <laughs> this stuff does get everything loose. It's... But we have to fix it. Put the spring back on. If you like this video, check out the video over there. You'll probably like that one as well. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget, dare to experiment and have fun creating. <laughs>